The Hemet Ryan Air Show with our 20th episode spectacular of there at Town. And are you ready to see some flying airplane jets and some stunts? And join us for the show. I'm here with Randy, and he's going to tell us about the Civil Air Patrol. Well, the Civil Air Patrol has been around since the uh, beginning of World War II. Oh! Ah, they yeah. were volunteers who helped uh, do patrols along the coast, mainly for German submarines along the Atlantic. And oh, that, yeah. And then it became an official act of Congress in the late 40s, and is involved to what it is today. We are the uh, largest fleet of Cessna aircraft in the world. We have 256 in the uh, United States and Alaska and Puerto Rico. What we're doing here today is supporting our aircraft, which is based here at Hemet, so we let people know what the Silver Air Patrol does. Yeah! Okay? Okay! You're, Thank you. You're, you're welcome. It's very Thank nice. Thank you, you, Randy Gibson. Okay. All righty. Lieutenant. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You did a very nice job. Thanks. First up for the jet car, this thing can go 400 miles per hour. Hour. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if I could direct your attention out to the runway in front of you. The next sound you are going to hear is the 10,000 pounds of thrust coming out of the back of the smoke and thunder jet dragster as Mr. Bill Brack is going to demonstrate for you what this machine is capable of. This thing is loud. This is smoke and thunder. Out on the runway, he is going to show you just how fast and how quickly this jet dragster can accelerate on the runway. Looking pretty good, Bill. What do you think you got up to here today? Well, I we had a little excitement on that run. They got wild animals out here. I don't know if that was a wolf or a coyote, so I said they're off at about 270. Well, good afternoon. My name is Bill Brock. I'm the driver of the Smoke and Thunder jet car. Earlier today, I was able to run down the runway here at the Hemet Ryan Airport, reach a speed of almost 300 miles per hour in just over five seconds. And unfortunately, this afternoon, we didn't get to go again because of the fire that the, uh, the wonderful uh, uh, fire pilots are uh, attacking. Smoke and Thunder is powered by a Westinghouse J34. It produces almost 12,000 horsepower or, or 6,500 pounds of thrust. That allows me to accelerate the car from a standing start to almost 400 miles per hour in about nine seconds. Uh, this runway here is a little short for me to go to those speeds, so the plan uh, for the second run was to go to about 330 to 350 miles per hour when I was going to race John Culver in War Dog. Uh, we do about 18 air shows a year. Uh, we'll be back here in Riverside County in November over at the Jackie Cochran Air Show on November 5th. Hi, how's it going, Sarah? What's your favorite part of the air show? My favorite part of the air show is watching the helicopters and the airplanes fly. 
It's cool, isn't it? It's really cool. Yeah, what brings you to the air show? Ferret Town. Nice. Give me five. What do you do on the air show? Uh, I fly helicopters, so I flew this helicopter here, and so I'm here to tell people about our flight school. So we teach people how to fly helicopters and airplanes. Cool! Um, helicopters are awesome. You should learn how to fly helicopters over airplanes, because they're a lot cooler. Yeah, Dad got toy helicopters. That's awesome. <laughs> you know the kind with the control stick? Yeah, those are fun. Yep. And my cat, my cat Up loves to go now. like play <laughs> with them. That's fun. Cats are awesome hogs. Huh? They love to play with everything. Oh yeah. <laughs> have you been in a helicopter before? I have, but I never drove one. Oh, you haven't? Well, I can. No, I've been in one, but I never yeah. drove one. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, we can teach yeah. you how to fly. Uh, that's okay. I'd be too chicken. <laughs> I already have a job. Yellow airplane, yellow airplane, are, are you on the radio? What? We have an air show going on. Oh no, Chuck, you just lost one of your wheels. Obviously, but, but we have an air show. You're, you're not part of the air show. Would you please land? I'm trying to, I'm trying to. I built this thing and I learned how to build it, kind of, but I didn't learn how to fly it. So. Well, what do you mean you built this thing? It's falling apart. You've already lost one part. Did? Yeah, your aileron came off. Did? The thing I put on, I was in a hurry. Where, where did you build this airplane? I was in prison. In prison? What prison? I got around one piece at a time. Well, it's falling apart one piece at a time, and we need you to get it back down on the ground. Now, we want you to land. What is your name? Chuck Dramamine? Oh, you're that guy. Well, well, Chuck, do you, can I help you learn how to fly the airplane so we can get you to land? Let me give you some guidance here. Is that okay? I don't want any help from you. I got my own book. Well, have you read it? I didn't have time. I was building the airplane. Well, okay, put the book away. I'm going to teach you how to land. Now, no, 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 no. Now, listen. Pull the, you got to pull the stick up, but not, not quite that far. Now level the nose, push the stick forward a little bit, and get the nose back down towards the runway. Come on, nose down, nose down. Oh, okay, you are an instructor. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, that was a close call. We got him down. Hey, how about it for Chuck Dramamine? And that is none other than air show professional and award-winning pilot from Minot, North Dakota, Mr. Kent Peach. Uh, this has been a God-blessed day with a car show and an air show. You can't ask for a better day than two in one. So what's your favorite airplane? My favorite airplane is actually a helicopter. Oh, I love helicopter too. Well, because I used to ride in helicopters and take photographs, and you can go very close to the ground, and then you can go really high, and it's just really exciting and fun. Yeah! I really am enjoying the show. I'm glad to hear about your show. I'm going to check it out. Mm -hmm. And you have a great day here at the air show. I think it's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next up we have the CDF Fire Crew. These are firefighters who put out fires with airplanes and helicopters. Cliff brings the Super Huey in low and slow. Out in front of you, to the right of the taxiway, you will see another representative from Cal Fire in uniform who is going to act as our recovery victim here today. Now the crew members on board the Huey are going to lower one of their own personnel out the side door of the aircraft. 
keep in mind they have perfect conditions here, but this could be happening in the mountains directly to the right of you in very inhospitable terrain, which would make the helicopter even more challenging to fly. You'll notice the CAL FIRE member on the skin of the helicopter standing outside the open door on the skid. The rescue man being lowered down to assist the person in need. With the rescue member now being hoisted back up on board the helicopter, the aircraft is able to start moving forward. You'll notice that Cliff kept the helicopter within about probably 50 feet of the ground. John Price with the Plains of Fame Air Museum. So, John Price, how long have they been doing this show in town? Um, the Hammond Air Show, this is, I believe this is our first time coming out here with Plains of Fame. Um, it's my first time getting out here, but this air show has been going for over a decade. Our air museum, which is over um, a few miles away in Chino, we've been, uh, we opened in 1957. Cool! So tell us about the B-25 we're standing in front of, Mr. John Price. This is a uh, North American B-25J Mitchell. It was uh, built um, by a North American company based in Inglewood, California. Cool. Uh, it's a twin-engine medium bomber from World War II. Uh-huh. Um, it flew over here. It's part of the Planes of Fame Museum's uh, flying collection. We have over uh, 40 airplanes that we still fly and take to air shows like this one. Cool! How many planes do they have at the museum? If you visit us over in Chino, we've got over um, 150 uh, displays, uh, over 100 airplanes, and we've got models and uh, um, various artifacts from World War II, and uh, I, I encourage you to come over and visit. Thank you, John! You're welcome, anytime. What's your favorite part of the air show? Well, it's a great way to show our aircraft from the Air Museum. We're from Palm Springs and we brought out three of our airplanes today. Really? We enjoy bringing our aircraft out so people can see what our planes look like. So we actually flew these out here so everyone can see them. All right! What would your aircraft do for World War II? Well, it mainly to carry paratroopers or cargo in to support the people that were on the ground. Can you imagine when people jumped out of that airplane and floated to the ground under parachutes? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. How many planes do you have at the Palm Springs Museum? We have 46, and most of them are flyable. Cool! A huge collection. Thank you, Gretchen and Bill. Hey, thank you. Next up is the Red Eagle. They fly in formation. Isn't this fun?
Hi, I'm Mike Drolley. I'm from the Commemorative Air Force from San Diego, Gillespie Field, Air Group One. We're here in Hemet today. Uh, we have with us a uh, World War II airplane called an L-3, an Aronka L-3, which was used during the Second World War largely as a liaison plane. It moved around officers or single troops at a time, so, or, or important people. Largely they were used for reconnaissance, uh, artillery spotting, and for ambulance service. Some of these, uh, some aircraft of this kind were fitted for uh, ambulances. They could carry one stretcher in the back. This airplane is actually built in 1941. Uh, we, we fly it, it, it's a very slow aircraft, flies about uh, 70 miles per hour top speed. Um, uh, we fly generally very low, or within about 1,000, 2,000 feet of the ground. Um, we give a lot, a lot of rides for people, it's very inexpensive to fly. The Commander of Air Force is um, a nationwide uh, group that uh, flies and restores World War II aircraft to let Americans know the sacrifice and the, and the level of technology that Americans had to use in the Second World War. Um, this aircraft is very simple. It's not like the, the fighter planes. It has a 65 horsepower engine, not like the, the P-51 or, or B-17, which had large thousands of horsepower engines. This was in service from 1941 to 1945. Modern day versions of this are made by the American Champion Company, uh, similar called the Citabria or Decathlon. They uh, have much, much larger engines and they can do aerobatics and so forth. Uh, some are generally considered a uh, bush plane. Uh, high wing airplanes are very notoriously used, notoriously used, famously used in Alaska and other parts of the world uh, where uh, the terrain isn't, uh, there's no paved runways, land on snow or on, on grass or dirt. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Up to the L4 and P51 flyby. This is gonna get loud. Next up is the F-86 flyby. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the right, almost everybody's favorite jet aircraft, Steve Hinton, at the controls of the North American F-86 Sabre. separated the end of the Second World War from the beginning of the Korean War. But in that time frame, aircraft like the F-86, the jet age, came into being. Hi, my name's Mike Bremner. I'm with Mach 1 Aviation. I'm their uh, chief marketing officer, their head marketing guy. Uh, we're a Cirrus Platinum Training Center out of Van Nuys, California. And uh, uh, we've just uh, uh, secured uh, these uh, very gracious corporate sponsors to give us money to come out uh, to buy fuel and come out and have the airplane open and let people sit in the airplane, excite the kids about aviation. 
this particular airplane is a Cirrus SR-22. Uh, it's well known for having the, the parachute system, meaning that the entire airplane will be supported by the parachute. And so, again, we're just uh, out here uh, uh, creating interest and fun about aviation. My name is Richard Lawrence. Uh, I'm with the Hemet Model Masters. And uh, we're here just to show everybody what we've got and, and uh, what kind of planes we like to fly and uh, what our club's about. We're about 200 people strong uh, in the club. And uh, we've got everything from electric helicopters to gas-powered helicopters, uh, multi-rotor, which you'll see out there in a little bit, and uh, all the way up to jet planes and everything in between. Some of these are replicas and some of them are not. And uh, they, they were in World War I, World War II. Uh, you know, then we got planes that come from the Korean War and Vietnam War. And then there are other models out here that absolutely have no true scale model to it. It's just on its own. We've been doing this show uh, for uh, 10 years plus. We just enjoy the sport. We have a good time with it. and. Um, it's a very much a family-oriented uh, group that we've got. My name is Doug Medore. Um, I'm here with the uh, Prop and Jet Air Museum. I'm the uh, uh, curator and uh, pretty much a one-man show uh, museum. I've got uh, these uh, jets out here, the L-29s, the Bird Dog, uh, also a couple other aircraft over here, the Triplane and the uh, little uh, World War II trainer, the PT-22. And I also fly radio-controlled aircraft over here with the Hemet Model Masters. But uh, just out here uh, enjoying the air show. Over here, uh, I've got four of these uh, L-29s. These are uh, Czechoslovakian single-engine jet, single uh, jet trainers. And um, uh, one day I hope to start a uh, formation jet team up uh, with them. But uh, I do have uh, currently four of them. And over here is the uh, L-19 uh, Bird Dog. It's a, a liaison aircraft. Uh, Vietnam era, and uh, like I said, over uh, over there, the other two are a uh, DR-1 triplane, which is a 1918 triplane that uh, uh, Manfred von Richthofen flew back in uh, World War One, and then a uh, PT-22 uh, uh, recruit that uh, uh, was uh, a uh, primary uh, prop uh, aircraft. Next up is Vicky Benzing and her Super 300S. to the jet racing class, and in her first year in jets, she also earned Rookie of the Year. Now this last year, at the races in Reno, 
Flying a specially prepared Aero Vodahodi L39 Albatross, Vicky set a world record speed. Please welcome Mr. John Melby in the Muscle Tips, the S111, proudly sponsored by Salute Event. Mickey set a world record speed of 469.831 miles per hour. Ladies and gentlemen, she is the fastest lady race pilot in aviation history. She is a skydiver with more than 1,200 free fall jumps to her credit. The smoke you see trailing from behind her aircraft is generated by a specially prepared wax-based oil called Corvus oil. This was designed back in the late 1920s. a world record speed. She is the fastest lady race pilot in aviation history. dissipates into non-polluting oil and is specifically designed for the purpose of showing the flight path of the aircraft during the virtual demonstration. On the knife edge now, the wings perpendicular to the ground, showing off the top wing of the aircraft and the salute of that. First year in Jets, she also earned Rookie of the Year. On your air show left, once again, ladies and gentlemen, she rolls the aircraft inverted. And ladies and gentlemen, give her a wave as she goes by the lovely Vicki Benzing. the aircraft, end over end, tail over nose, that is a maneuver called the Lomchebeck. The fastest lady race pilot in aviation history.
shoulder straps are all that are keeping her in the seat of the aircraft now, where she experiences those five negative Gs. My name is Vicki Benzing and I'm here at the Hemet Air Show um, on Saturday, June the 4th. It was a hot day out here and we had a, a girl boy versus boy contest um, flying in what we call a squirrel cage where each one of us goes into the box and flies a different maneuver. So I don't know uh, which maneuvers you were remembering, but the ones I did, uh, I started out with a, um, a torque roll and then a centrifuge and I did a tail slide. We did a bunch of rolls uh, just along the runway. I flew inverted up the runway. Uh, what else did I do? I did a tumble off the top of a half loop. Uh, I don't know, I was just trying to kill it, I think. <laughs> and, and honestly, even though it's really hot out, it, uh, I didn't even notice it once I got flying in the air because that's, that's what flying does for me. It takes me away from everything else that's earthbound and just puts me in a whole different space and I love it. And it's the, like the best thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> so thank you. Oh, and I should thank my sponsors, Apex Aerospace and California Aeronautical University. This is a, an extra 300S, and you can see that there on the tail. The S stands for single seat. That means it's, uh, it's my office in the middle of the cockpit there and nobody else is in it. Um, it has uh, an IO, it, actually it's an AEIO, that means it's an aerobatic uh, fuel injected uh, 540 engine, and that's the, the displacement of the engine. So it's a six cylinder engine, it makes more than 300 horsepower. It's got 10 to 1 pistons, it's been pumped up, um, it's got uh, 6 to 1 exhaust and electronic ignition and all the things to make it go fast and hard and so I can do all the fun things that I want to do. And did I tell you that a girl can't ever have enough horsepower? Thank you for the interview and good luck with Surristown.